Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of All Day Edify the Show. We are your hosts, Natasha and Corey. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm really excited about today's show, babe. Um, you know, we're going to be getting into a topic that you and I love both talking about. Um, that's the three Ps. Yes. And so this is an excellent show today for that reason, the three Ps. And so you're probably wondering, what are they talking about? Why do they keep saying the three Ps? So we're talking about planning, patience, and persistence. And Absolutely. so those are three words and and not applying them don't have value or even applying them in a way that is insignificant can leave you wondering what it would be like to apply them in a more value added way. And so if it's done the right way, the three P's are a game changer. Yeah, it is. It, and it's actually the just the idea, the concept of developing a game plan in an area of life that is important to you. It's like in your heart. It's it's a part of, you know, you wake up every day thinking about certain areas of your life. Then why not plan and prepare and be prepared to tackle those areas of your life? So we're talking about having um, goals directed towards your vision and then taking the time to develop them. And, you know, we, we said we could have called this the four P's because the important aspect of being able to uh, plan, uh, be patient and persistent. It involves prayer as well. Absolutely. And so when you're talking about planning, if you're planning right and you're sticking to it and you're sticking to the tasks that line up with your plan, you are on your way to fulfilling your destiny. Plus, like we talked about on a previous episode, sticking to your plan helps you steer clear of distractions and procrastination. All of the things that can disrupt your plan and sidetrack your destiny. I agree. And so that's why the more, you know, we talk about this, babe, the more we think about how there are steps that you take in life uh, to get where you want to be. And as you're taking these steps, having developed a plan, now moving day to day towards that plan, you should be getting more confidence. And as you get more confidence, what actually happens is you begin to see yourself more and more walking out that plan, getting more confidence. And then it gives you a little bit, it makes it easier to have patience. I'll put it that way. And so as you take these steps, you start seeing a big general plan because you have a general idea, but the closer you start moving, getting more confidence in each step that you're taking and your plan is going the right way, you go from just having a general plan and some expectations to now you start seeing details. It's kind of like a silhouette. You start, the closer you get, the more easier it is to see the details of what's in front of you. Exactly, exactly. And so now that you mentioned it, when you talk about a silhouette, that reminds me of, you know, starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and your dream or your plan is coming into fruition. Absolutely. And so, one, you know, I can say that the reason that we both like this, because we both see areas of our strong suits um, that we see within these three topics. Uh, for me, I'm a visionary person. You know, um, I believe in strategic planning. That's something that I put a lot of thought behind and I share it with my wife because her strength is she's awesome at developing day to day tasks to help us to move towards those plans, even as we are, you know, kind of bouncing ideas off each other on what the details of that plan should look like. So if you could, babe, just kind of share with us a little bit um, what the planning process is like for you and your thoughts. Right. So when you talk about um, planning, there is a couple uh, key words that you used when you were um, bringing this topic up. One thing is, um, you know, planning one step at a time. That's kind of how you start the planning process. But one big key word to me um, when you were bringing this up, you talked about vision. And so mm -hmm. I've been in administration for over 15 years. And so I look at when you use that word vision, visionary, um, I think of it in two different ways. So um, when you talk about vision, um, working for an organization, a lot of companies, they have mission statements, vision statements. And so with me, 
working for an organization, knowing that they have a vision, my antennas light up because I know that there's a planning process to assist working side by side with that organization to help walk that vision out, to make that vision become true. And so that's what happens when you know, you're working with the organization and they have a vision. You want a partnership with them to walk out their vision. Another thing when I think of vision is how you are the head of our house and you have a vision and a plan for the direction you want our home and our family to go in. And me being your spouse and being in partnership with you, my main focus is to assist in making sure that we're walking that vision out as well because I need to plan now because now that I know what the vision is, like the Bible say, you know, write the vision, make it plain, then I'm able to assist with helping you make that vision come into fruition. Absolutely. And, and that's why when when there's more than one person involved in the planning process, that's the beauty of really getting to have a vision and then the wide ranging um, you know, aspects of how that thing can turn out on the as an end result. And so a big part of that is embracing and inviting other people into the planning process. You know, when you have other people who have different thoughts, a different set of creativity themselves, it makes it a lot easier for you to say, hey, well, you know, you're bouncing ideas off each other and you have to understand that you can't be committed to all the details have to come from you. For example, no, a part of planning is if you're working with someone else, you're partnering with somebody else. That means that somebody else has some creativity that they can add to the pot. And now you're starting to work and develop that plan. And if you're patient and you're involving one another, then all of a sudden and more importantly, like we talked about, you're going uh, to God in prayer and saying, you know, reveal to us what parts of our plan we need to fine tune or adjust so that we can move in a way that is consistent with your plan, because God's plan is greater than our plans that we have for ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that just kind of ties into, um, you know, when we kind of talk about patience. And so, um, you know, I know that you said that we were talking when you were talking about prayer, how all of that kind of intertwines together. And so you're linking um, patience with prayer yes. as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes we begin to what happens is uh, we get excited, man. We, you know, when we have, whenever we're working on a project, uh, whenever we uh, take on um, something new that we're doing and we both believe in it and we both contribute to it. Um, the same thing may apply for some of you that as you're taking steps towards that, right, you begin to get excited. And, you know, like the old saying, it says, you know, you don't want to put the cart before the horse. So as you're taking some progressive steps, you don't want to be hasty. You want to be patient. Absolutely. You want to allow one step at a time to develop. And then as things are developing, then you see when is the adequate or most appropriate time to throw in that new wrinkle in the plan that you've uh, that you've put in. So then now you're progressing at a pace that allows you to, as you said, you're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but you don't want to move too fast just because you're seeing greater details and your expectation level goes up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know you have a couple of um examples of you know when you're talking about patience and i know you use some you always you know around the house using cooking analogies and so you know what what do you have to say about that with a cooking analogy right right well um well i'll put it this way you know because i do like to cook and i like to eat and a big part of it is you know whether you grilling or uh baking or whatever my wife's better at baking than i am it's like when you baking a cake though when you're baking a cake, there's a maturation process. They give you specific instructions and directions. You're better off following those instructions. If they tell you to set the oven at a certain temperature and then you put in that, uh, that once you did all the whipping and all the ingredients are there, you stir them up real good. You need that oven to be at that right temperature. You need all the ingredients to be in place but you have to allow it to stay in the oven for the time that is prescribed. If you try to take it out the oven prematurely or before it's ready to come out, 
that cake ain't going to have the same results. It ain't going to taste right. It ain't going to rise the same way. You know what I mean? And so the same thing goes for us. When we have plans, we want to be patient with it because if we allow it to take its course the way that it should, then we should see it develop and we see a masterpiece at the end of it. I don't want to taste my, I love my wife's uh, cheesecake, but I don't want to taste it prematurely. We take it out the oven too soon. It ain't going to taste as good as it is uh, when we take it out at the right time. And, and that's funny to me that you can kind of use cooking analogies with almost anything. And so that being really fit really good within that concept. Um, so so that's ap absolutely right. I mean, it's not going to be right. And you defeat the purpose of even doing what you did if it's not as satisfying as it could be or as you envision. And yeah. so I think a couple of other um examples that we could talk about when we talk about patience is, you know, being patient with our kids, you know, us being parents and things like that. You know, yeah. we really try to instill values, you know, in our kids and, you know, just trying to make sure, you know, even when you have uh, small kids before they even get to, um, you know, the, the school age, you know, just trying to teach them how to crawl, teach them right. how to hold their bottle, talk right. things like that just having that type of patience you know with your kids um is a real big deal another um you know big deal for me is you know because we're married i think that with your spouse having um you know patience with your spouse i believe is really really key and important because in that relationship there's a lot of give and take and sometimes you feel like there's more take than give from one or the other but just knowing and understanding your spouse i think that you know you would learn to grow and have more patience um and then to me i also think that um when you're talking about relationships overall not just with you know with me and you with your spouse or whatever but i think that in just normal relationships with your family members um with your co-workers yeah. um just overall generally i just think that you know having patience with one another i mean i know with me on my job you know to me you know it's it's challenging sometimes but i always have to have that mindset that i need to be patient because i would like for people to be patient with me and so i try to get to learn and understand people because everybody is not the same so i have to know how to deal with different people and their personality so that way i can have that patience and so that's those are some just examples that i know of in terms of where you really need to have your patience yeah, I agree. I like one of the other points that you bring out um, that you mentioned earlier, where you were saying that, um, you know, it's not going to reach its intended purpose. You defeat the purpose of, you know, putting effort into either of these relationships um, and you are not being patient with them, with your kids. You want your kids to come out right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want your kids to turn out half baked. You know what I mean? You don't want your kids to end up, you know, uh, internally some things are not right. So it may the exterior might look good, but because you are impatient with them, you know, it puts them in a situation where they got to go to therapy or something for, you know, before they reach adulthood and in their adult life because of your impatience in dealing with them. Um, the same thing goes with the work relationships that we have and our family members. Um, you know, if we're not demonstrating the level of patience that we need, you know, sometimes people abandon relationships prematurely. You know, I feel like, you know, hey, this marriage isn't working out right. So I just want to go our separate ways. Why? Because you're being impatient and there's a lot of growth and development that can take place in that marriage relationship growth that God intended for you to have and to gain from and to learn from and to benefit from. But we get impatient and we get hasty and we're ready to abandon those relationships on a job. You can be doing really well on a job um, and got a lot of you know professional development uh, opportunities to really set you up for your next promotion. But we get impatient and we want to abandon that. And, and then now all of a sudden you don't reach your ceiling or your potential as you could. Uh, without having to go back to the drawing board, which is a different topic that we have coming up. Uh, but another topic that as we were putting this together, you and I were talking about is the concept of, you know, so many of us are adult learners. 
you know, when we were in the early stages of our marriage, thank God we've been married for 18 years now. But in the early stages of our marriage, uh, we were adult learners. We were in the classroom working full time jobs. And, you know, sometimes we go back to school or go get some more training or certifications or vocational training in our adult life at a time when we got so much other stuff going on that it makes it difficult because we want to accelerate all of that. We want to get the pay increase. Well, we want the better job opportunities to come faster, but we really have to be patient as adult learners to be able to learn some things in the classroom while we're going to work every day, doing homework at night, going to class and learning some things that we could still be applying in our current role on the job, opposed to just running through homework and getting assignments done when there's some takeaways we can be applying. You, you recall any of that yourself, babe? Absolutely. And, and actually, when you bring that up, that just kind of um, segues into, you know, our last topic. But you were talking about, you know, doing multiple things and that's kind of multitasking. And so I believe that, you know, when you're trying to multitask, you're you have a plan and right. you're being patient, making sure that, you know, things are going well with what your plan is. Then there's persistence. I think that being persistent and trying to make sure that the plan is going to work and keeping up with it and things like that. I think that um, this topic right here, this subject, persistence is an area of strength for you. And so you don't you don't give up on things, babe. I mean, you might get frustrated at times, but I think it's because you're one of those people you love hard and you do well under pressure. I mean, that's just that's just usually what happens. And it just floors me because I kind of stress out sometimes when it's so much coming at you and you just, you know, it just kind of feels like there's that little, um, you know, when Popeye eat his spinach or, you know, one of that accelerator button, it's like all of this pressure, you're like, oh yeah, here it is. Now I'm about to really, you know, that just really gets you going. And right. so what does persistence look like to you? I mean, what gives you the strength? to hang in there in pressure situations? Well, I, I think that one of the things that I really um, enjoy about being in those pressurized situations is because um, I'm tapping into, I'm going into a new um, area, a new season that I have not experienced before. So that's exciting to me. The idea of going into a different season um, or a different experience, um, you know, just exceeding, um, you know, or having achieved one level of success, you know, like they always say, more money, more problems or whatever. You, yes. The more experiences you get, the more uh, you begin to experience some success um, in some area. I mean, when I say success, I mean, just doing well enough to pass one test to where you're progressing to another season. Um, and so I, I do know that, you know, some of the things that that matter the most to me um, and to me, determination looks like leaving it all on the field. You know, persistence is just leaving it all on the field is that I'm going to exhaust everything I have. Um, you know, you take on the thought process that when it's all said and done, I don't want to fall short and look at it as though it's because I didn't put enough effort into it. You know, I, the, two of the biggest impacts in my life when I was growing up uh, was my grandfather's my mother's dad and my father's dad, they were almost very, they were almost like opposites of each other, but they had some things in common. One of the things that they had in common is the things that they believe in. My granddad starting his own business at a young age, one of the first African-American men in this community to do that and get uh, financing from a bank here locally. And then my, my other granddad who just, he was just, he took big risk in the things that he believed in. And so um, to the point to where, you know, if you believe in some things, I learned from them that you just put your heart into it. You know what I mean? You don't just walk away from it. You don't say, hey, uh, I couldn't do my best. You know what I mean? Both of them would get at me about that. And this reminds me of this, this Muhammad Ali, because the thing that was unique about both my granddads is that they both love boxing and they oh. both love Muhammad Ali. So when I'm around either of them, they love Muhammad Ali when I was growing up. But there's this quote that I love. Uh, if we could throw that up, babe, it says, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit, suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. And so 
Um, you know, when I think about that, that, just that idea that, man, he was the greatest. He called himself the greatest of all time for a reason, because he was the greatest. And he put in the effort to where it says, you know what, I might not be good at this. Or I might not be good at that or whatever. Um, a lot of people don't realize it, but, you know, early stages of my life, I was discovered to have um, ADHD and ADD. And so what that means is that my mom, thank God, she didn't put me on medication, but it just helped me to see and understand that the things that I really love and that I'm passionate about, oh, I can get my attention in detail to those things, but the things that I struggle with, I'll, I'll man, if it's not in my heart deep rooted, then I'm not going to be able to stay as committed to it. So the things that I am persistent about, babe, and you bring that up, is the things that are in my heart, the things that my family um, goals that I have, uh, supporting goals that you have and us encouraging one another through those things. So yeah, we get frustrated sometimes, but at the end of the day, if we really believe that that's obtainable, then we have to continue to push towards that and to pursue it. And so to me, that's what persistence looks like is that, you know what, you know, you only live one life and life is short. So you don't want to, when your day is over and you're done, I always feel like my granddad's, you know, they made their rest in peace. I feel like they looking at me still and saying like, is you being, you know, uh, chicken crap or is you still fighting and trying to get where you want to be? And I owe it to them and to my family to make sure that I'm trying to do my best with that. Well, that's, those are some very good analogies and, you know, your grandfathers were so strong in how, you know, their personalities were and how they raised you and giving you those traits. And um, one of the, the things that I was thinking is um, when I was talking about this being a strength for you, that's another thing that came up to me in my mind was a superpower. It's like being under pressure is a superpower for you. And so that kind of just gets you going and, you know, you being persistent. And so those were some really good, you know, um, examples that you gave. Um, I do know that um, there was a quote, you know, when we were talking about this, mm. um, that, you know, I wanted to kind of just bring up that it says that if your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. And so I was just kind of looking at this quote and I was just, you know, trying to, you know, filter through it because it's kind of intimidating when you look at it just initially, because it's like, when you talk about your dreams and you talk about your goals and aspirations, you don't really want, want to be scared. You want to feel like, oh, this is my dream. This is something that I want to do and it's going to make me happy. But yeah. you know, it's saying if your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. And so that's kind of intimidating. Can you kind of, you know, tell me what do you how do what when when I showed that quote, what did you think about? Yeah. Yeah. I know when we were talking about this, you know, it's. The idea that, you know, when you wake up every day, everybody, I believe that all of us, we're blessed to have something about our life experiences and the aspirations that are deposited on the inside of us based on our life experiences or based on what our skill sets are, that we begin to see ourselves really trying to maximize um, what that skill set is or what our desires and interests are what our passions are. And I believe that when you are a person who has plans and dreams, you wake up every day thinking about some of these things. And when you wake up thinking about these things, all of a sudden now you begin to have an expectation of being able to pursue that or what that was going to look like for you, a visual of that. Again, we talk about that silhouette and you, you start moving towards that and you have an expectation. And as you move with those expectations in mind, as you plan with that in mind, as you develop some, some patience in your prayer life and you're persistent about it, you begin to get an idea of what the details of that visual, that dream should look like. I'll give you an example. If somebody asks you, what is your dream meal or what is your dream vacation? What does that look like for you? Uh, I would believe that if you can reach out and go grab your keys and jump in your car and just take a drive to get to that dream vacation, then that's not really requiring a whole lot of effort. You know what I mean? So how much, how intimidating or challenging is that for you to be able to achieve that? And the same thing goes for, like you said, I like to talk about food. 
The same thing goes for what is your dream meal? Well, if you can stop at a local fast food or one of the chain restaurants in your community and go get that dream meal, it doesn't require a lot of effort. What came to mind when we were thinking about this, babe, is this movie that we saw before. Uh, Queen, Latifah, uh, Queen Latifah was in this movie with LL. Um, and I think it's like that last holiday or something like that. Right? Right. And in that holiday. movie, she's sitting up and planning. She's ordering cookbooks. She wants to take this vacation to Europe to this exquisite hotel. And she knows that there's this top notch chef there. So she's preparing this meal for years. And then she finds out that she actually doesn't have that long to live. You know, we should all have this sense of urgency too. Like we got to act on the things that we desire. Or and that's and that's we, and, and when you bring that up, that's that's where we were talking about. Right. Once she found out that she thought that she was gonna die, that's when her superpower, her persistence, and planning, and all of that stuff really kicked into gear. Is yeah. because she thought that she didn't have much time so just having that mindset now she's ready to everything i've been dreaming about all the things i wanted to do in life yep. now i need mm -hmm. to do that right now and so that's what we were talking about yep yep and as we draw this to a close it's just something that we should all be thinking about is that our, our you know life is short and if there are some things that you desire to do and you believe that you are purpose to do you should be planning for that you should be planning for that. You should be persistent about pursuing it. You should be patient, you know, continue to really try to tap into your creativity and what it's going to take to get there. And so I want to encourage people to do that because I believe that if you apply the three P's in your life, along with prayer, you can get where it is that you are purpose to go. You can reach your destiny. Absolutely. And so I do want to um, let you let let all the viewers know that if you have questions um, about a show or anything like that, you can send us an email at alldayedify at gmail.com or you can contact us on our Facebook page at All Day Edify regarding any um, shows previously or like the show today. If you have questions that you want to connect with us, we can um, at our next show or something like that, follow up on some of the questions that you may have. And yeah. so this just kind of wraps us up for today. I mean, this time just goes by so fast once we get to talking to Absolutely. each other. But, you know, we want to really thank you guys for, you know, watching another episode of All Day Edify, the show where our aim is to uplift, inform, and enlighten you. All day, every day. Do you provide human services? Are you an entrepreneur that contributes to society? Do you have access to tools and resources that facilitate growth and development? Come be a guest on our show. You can email us at alldayedify at gmail.com or send us a message on our Facebook page at All Day Edify. A new TV channel, Sundial Networks, showcasing urban culture, music, lifestyle, fashion, talk shows, comedy, movies and more tv lineups slow jams game of life sundial soul live from the smokehouse the battle new versus old 60s and 70s time machine all that jazz and on sunday special programming with religious roots gospel soul r&b classic gospel you can find us on the web and on most smart tvs at www.sundial Dot TV. That's sundial.tv. And on Roku. Yes, Roku. Free. No subscription needed. Search for us under Sundial Networks. That's S U N D I A L Networks. Sundial Networks. From the great city of Flint, Michigan, Sundial Networks presents live at the Golden League with the Eclipse Band featuring the stars of tomorrow and amateur night with history in the making open mic. Watch the TV show every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Search us on Roku under Sundial Networks. Also available on most smart TVs. On the web at www.sundial.tv. That's sundial.tv. No subscription needed. Watch the TV show with the Eclipse Band featuring the stars of tomorrow. Only on the Sundial Networks.
Search us on Roku. On the Sundial Networks. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. That's sundial.tv. Watch the TV show. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. www.sundial.tv.